Okay, so I've gone through a lot to try to get everything working here. I had to get a new headset. I um, just now uninstalled OBS and installed the newest version. So there's a new version out there if you need it. I'm hopefully cleaning up both the sound and picture in one fell swoop, but we'll we'll find out. So anyway, I've made some adjustments to Bray. I tried to make a video to explain them earlier. Um, I actually posted it, not realizing that the video was super buggy. Um, I got a couple of comments as feedback telling me that it was for all intents and purposes a useless video so i took it down so hopefully this one works out and we can um, go back to playing some magic so anyway i made a few changes to the deck um i did really like the early black disruption but i wanted to um modify things for uh, more um the only problem with those cards is that uh so I, I wanted to, I wasn't able to fit everything into the deck that I wanted to fit into the deck. And so I had to make some adjustments uh, somewhere. And so I ended up kind of fusing those two cards into Notion Thief, which is weird because it, Notion Thief isn't exactly discard. However, if I combine it with Dak Faden or Cephalid Coliseum or response to their Brainstorm or their Jace, so on and so forth, or, <laughs> or if they uh, really try to combo me out and hit me with a... Um, with a something like a time twister or a wheel of fortune the notion thief completely breaks their back and it actually allows me to so because i didn't i took out the double um black sorceries on turn one i took badlands back out and i put cephalid coliseum in its place as a 31st land the coliseum is just a very good card um in general there's very little drawback to it and um it actually creates a soft lock in this deck so the soft lock is notion thief um, Cephalid Coliseum and Crucible Worlds. And what you do is, um, if they after they draw their card for the turn, let's say they've got, I don't know, anywhere from one to three cards in hand, you hit them with Cephalid Coliseum, so they're still in their draw phase. Um, and now at this point, if they don't have an instant, if they only have sorceries, lands, artifacts, and so forth, um, then they're going to discard, they're going to attempt to draw three cards and uh, you're going to draw them as a replacement effect from Notion Thief. So you've already Ancestral Recalled. But then on top of that, they now have to discard three cards. And if they had three or less in their hand, you've stolen their turn. So what you do is, what that combination does, that soft lock is repeatedly, it for all intents and purposes, it casts Time Walk. And then, because you're stealing their draw phase, and then Ancestral Recalls you. So that's a three card combo for infinite time walks and ancestral recalls. It's a pretty good combo and it certainly ends a game. But even if you do, if you don't, you know, you shouldn't get greedy. If you can, whether or not you take their whole hand, whether or not you can do the thing during their draw phase, if you can hit them with Notion Thief, Cephalid, Coliseum, even once and just hit them with a light mind twist for three while simultaneously ancestral recalling yourself, you've probably won the game on that alone. So. Uh, it's a great combo, and it also works very well with, um, you can use Notion Thief Dak Faden uh, to actually the th greatest thief in the multiverse combined with his uh, Notion Thief buddy over here. And what you do is you plus up D uh, Dak and you target your opponent. They attempt to draw two cards but can't, so you draw two cards. They still have to discard two for Dak, so it's a, it's a, s a slightly weaker version of the Colosseum combo, but it uh, requires no mana, no sacking of lands, and it's reusable. Um, it's a complete backbreaker as well. Um, and it curves really well. You can go Dak Faden one turn, um, and then on the next turn you play your land, cast Notion Thief, and then plus up Dak Faden right there, which is pretty cool. So you actually like, you go Dak, steal your artifact, next turn, Notion Thief, steal your hand. It's uh, it's a pretty gross combo that actually showed up in um, Type 1 decks. So if that tells you anything. So I um, those are the big changes. The other smaller change is that I swapped sort of Fire and Ice out. I put Umazawa's Jite in. Umazawa's Jite, because we're going to be getting Necropotence a lot in this deck, and Jite is basically a draw four with a Necropotence, whereas Fire and Ice is a draw one. So pre-Necropotence, Jite... Um, because I took the Abyss out of the deck, I wanted a replacement, and that was originally what Fire and Ice was doing. But Jitte does it better, so um, I just I like having I like having the card that works better. Does not require me to actually connect with my opponent. I can just you know trade with the creature and still get the effect. 
Um, it's stronger against green. I can muddle for it. It's cheaper to fetch with um, to f uh, excuse me with Tezzeret. So like if I use Tezzeret to get Winter Orb, and then the next turn I Tezzeret into a Jitte, assuming I have you know a creature or whatever, um, so that I can kill like mana dorks that are trying to get them out from under the orb. It's a great uh, series sequence of plays. So just just very strong and uh, fits very well in the deck. I think. Uh, a little bit better than Fire Ice did. Um, and there just isn't enough room. The, the weaker equipment, in my estimation, are uh, Skull Clamp and Fire and Ice. Um, the card drawing um, equipment, because the deck draws a lot of cards. You do a lot of um, putting cards in your hand. So what you really want more than card drawing, I think, from your equipment slots is you want um, support in doing what um, is going to trouble you or other things that you don't do as well or as, as easily. Um, and getting cards in your hand is not really the problem. Um, the things you don't do as well or as easily, discard, untap all your lands, um, kill all their creatures, or end a game quick. Sometimes you take and do that as well. So just because of commander damage, how it interacts with commander damage on, uh, on Brea. So those are the big changes. Um, no other changes than mana base. I'm going to scroll down here. And let's play a game and take a look. And uh, hopefully, stuck around. I'm, I'm only going to run the one game, only because it was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, not necessarily because it's particularly serious. But I just I just enjoyed the game quite a bit, and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm playing against Narset, which, first of all, is always satisfying to win. Um, and I've got a land tax hand, which is excellent uh, against the blue deck. So I'll uh, lead off with tax. He leads off with a card that goes and fetches lands. That's perfect. All right, play Talisman. And uh, even if I had a land, of course, I would not be playing one. So he plays his third land. So I get the Lancestral. And uh, I'm actually not going to take the full three here because I figure I can take two and then now and take one later. Um, so uh, and then he plays Rouse the Wreck. And I decide I'm going to leak it while I can. Probably could have remanded there. Might have been a little bit better, but... Um, no problem. So anyway, I'm, I figure uh, other than fast mana, I'm safe to cast my commander here. And it may have some longer term benefits. But even if he does have fast mana, I've got Deluge in my hand. So I'll go ahead and tap out for my commander. Um, since I've already seen a Planeswalker, I wanted the commander on board as a solution to other Planeswalkers. So send in the, I play Shackles and send in the team at his Planeswalker. And he doesn't chump block, which is really weird to me. Um, then he plays Narset, so I let him have that. Just take his um, guy who could go and get lands for him. And uh, from here, I don't attack with it, however, because he controls the equipment, not me. And then I just uh, deluge for two. So Narset's dead for the first time. Then his turn, I uh, enlighten Tutor and go get uh, Future Sight. Thought about, you know, there's some other cards I could have got. I, I thought about, like, Feast and Famine or whatever, but Future Sight just seemed right. So the top of my library is now a Swords to Plowshare. It's not particularly good against Narset. Um, so I'm going to remand it away. I remand it away into Notion Thief. So during my upkeep, I cast Notion Thief, draw a land. The next card is land. I play the land, and four cards down is Dak Faden. So I just plus and he discards two planeswalkers and i draw two uh jace and a counter spell revealing expedition map of all things so he plays his commander and i stoic and he concedes but look what happens if he doesn't concede right here so on the next turn i would uh plus dak which would take the last two cards out of his hand and draw two cards for me so i would already have drawn expedition map and i'd have two other mystery cards then i would not play a land i would uh yet i would cast expedition map and go get cephalid coliseum and uh and then i would say go and then well i'd attack him right wasteland is a mystic monastery and then i would say go and he would be one land short of playing his of playing his commander again so he has he needs eight i think or is it ten well at any rate he was a little bit shy so now he draws for the turn and during his draw steps yeah, i have a stop there I just Cephalid Coliseum, just like I said, um, what I was talking about earlier. Coliseum during his draw step. If he drew a counterspell, bye-bye counterspell. If he drew a land, goodbye land. If he drew some kind of instant speed card drawing, like uh, it'd have to be a good one. It'd have to be like Stroke of Genius or Opportunity or something. 
Um, but even if it was, um, and assuming I didn't count it, then I would still take three cards out of his hand. Like, let's say he tapped out and did a big stroke of genius in response. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. So let's say he drew, he drew five cards. The Colosseum would take three out of his hand right there. Well, and then he would only be left with two, and then Dak would take the last two cards out of his hand. I'd replay the Colosseum, and he's back in the lock again. So there's just no getting out of that. Um, totally, totally uh, amazing. And I was really looking forward to uh, pulling it off, but he gave up before our, before that happened. So it's funny here. You see, I, I got the tax out. The other thing was I got the tax out here, and I used it for good effect to play three lands. Um doing exactly what I needed, hitting land drop three times in a row and giving me basic islands that were I can use uh, to get around wastelands and, and hosers and uh, powering up shackles, one, two, three. In fact, in fact, I've got five islands and three of them came from tax for shackles. Of course, he doesn't have any targets, but it's still a nice, nice thing. So anyway, that's all I've got. It was just that quick, fun little game. It's really cool to contemplate how... Um, you know that how nasty that combo is and what's really funny about it is let's say somebody's got like uh oh man they could have a lot of stuff in play let's say he had um say sensei's divining top in play well that wouldn't get him out of the that wouldn't get him out of the box because uh sensei's divining top he could never actually activate it to draw a card um because uh if he tried to use sensei's divining top the card would just go into my hand and the top would go to the top of his library so you know it's just it's just there's no there's no uh, escaping the uh, notion thief, and I think for that reason is why I wanted it in the deck. Even though, oh, that was the other thing. I put humility back in the deck. So humility is such a backbreaker against decks where it's good. I just don't see that you can cut it um, because um, creatures have so many come to play abilities. Like you, you just need to. You sh I think humility shuts down somewhere around ten to what. 15,000 cards all get shut down by humility. Um, it's just way, way, way too good uh, to say no to for a control deck. And when I didn't have it in here, I've tried I tried um, taking it out and replacing it with the Abyss. I tried uh, other, you know, various other removal. I tried all kinds of things. Without humility, um, what it came down to was I had to counter way too many creatures. You know, suddenly I have to counter every single stupid come into play or leave playability on a creature and it was just no good so with humility i just i just play humility and only have to deal with things that remove it and i can safely ignore their creatures and uh, i just think i just think you can't you can't beat that um that kind of potency uh wrapped up into one into one card and in fact uh between humility and winter orb that those two cards right there shut down almost every deck out there and out of the ones that it doesn't shut down we've got plenty of uh of uh stuff for them too like uh, the decks that doesn't shut down if they're artifact heavy you've got vandal blast and deck and a ready and uh if they're um, just pure control of course you've got mind twist and you've got necro and you've got will and so forth notion thief now so i don't know i really enjoy this deck it's a lot of fun and i hope that you had fun and I just wanted to say thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.